This video is going to be all about instinctive combat knife throwing, and it's going to be a part two to a tutorial I did a year ago on hammer grip, no spin knife throwing. You don't want to miss it. Stick around. Being able to throw knives is one thing, but becoming dangerous and instinctive with one is another. I know that there are some people who find knife throwing completely pointless as something to have in your combat arsenal, and that's fine. This video is not for you. Nevertheless, the ability to take a piece of steel and throw it through the air extremely fast, extremely well, and instinctive is always going to be a dangerous thing. There's plenty of guys out there that I respect that believe knife throwing to be a viable combat option. You've got YouTube channels like Pro Knife Thrower. He's done several different types of tests, throwing knives into hard objects. He's got one video where he's throwing his saber tooth knife into a ballistic skull and it just does a ton of damage. There's another video where it looks like he's at some kind of butcher shop. There's a pig hanging up and he throws a knife all the way through that. You've got guys out there like Matei Florin who wrote the book Blade Warrior, which is a very good comprehensive instructional book on knife combat. And he's got a whole section devoted to combat knife throwing. In fact, his preferred method of throwing is what we're gonna be learning in this video. He's in Romania. He does a lot of anti-piracy missions. He works out in the field and he believes this is a good skill set to have. I had to cover all of this in the beginning of the video because knife throwing gets a lot of attacks. I'm out on TikTok and knife throwing just gets a lot of slander just because, I don't know, I think it gets a rise out of people. I think a lot of people can't do it, so they turn on it. Nevertheless, if you want to learn how to do instinctive hammer grip, no spin throwing, this video is for you. A lot of people will see this throwing style and they won't call it no spin because they see the knife coming out of my hand this way and it flies and makes its correction eventually makes the connection. People will say, man, that was not a no spin throw. That thing did a 180 spin. It's because they see the knife turning over in the air. I can understand that. And, and when we use the term no spin, we're not talking about this thing shooting out of our hands like an arrow. You have to bring it back and create the no spin. It's no spin because we're not using any of the mechanics that we do for half spin throwing or rotational throwing. We're simply pushing the knife through the air. It's very instinctive. Whether we're 10 feet away, whether we're 20 feet away, we simply pull the knife back and just push it. And we don't worry about rotation principles. At a close distance, it's easy to just chop down on it like this. But when you start getting further back, you kind of got to cock this thing back this way. And that's where a lot of people refuse to call this thing no spin. But I'm going to stick to my guns and continue to call this hammer grip no spin. Why hammer grip? Well, because I'm holding it this way. I'm not holding it with my finger on the spine. I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding the handle just like if I was fighting with a knife, I'm holding it because I can go from swinging a knife this way to actually throwing it. And when I do throw it, I usually will grip it this way and I will usually push from here. And speaking of pushing, I got some pushback in my last tutorial for not slowing it down enough and letting people see it. So I'm just gonna do some throws and let you feast on this. I'm gonna let you watch it. I'm gonna show it from different angles. I'm gonna show it fast. I'm gonna show it slow-mo. I'm gonna show it every way possible for you to get the picture you need in your mind to get out and start working on this. We're gonna start up close and then we're gonna just keep working our way back. And I'm gonna provide you plenty of slow-mo clips so that you can get a good look at this and then get out and practice. This throwing style is on the fly as it gets. I'm throwing with a Walrevo tracker today. You get in front of your target, you're using torque and push at the same time. You're holding it, you're bringing it back, you're using torque and you're letting it slide out of your hand. You can do this pretty sensibly up to 20 feet and that's an awesome distance to be doing this. You can go even further out. You can get out sometimes as far as 30, 30 some feet. Some dudes can throw forever no spin. But if you can do this at 20 feet, I think that's awesome. Let's hit this right now from about 15 to 16. Here we go. I'm gonna put this in slow-mo so you can see it at this angle. Notice as I'm bringing it back, I'm already starting to loosen my grip on the blade. You're not holding it really tight and ah, letting it go all of a sudden. 
you're just maintaining it, but when you're ready to throw, man, you got to get that thing ready to slide. Roughly 23 feet. Your number one, your number one enemy with this style of throwing is the tendency to baseball throw it. You can't do it. You got to make sure that push is there because if you just sling your arm, it's going to over rotate. It's got to have that push. It's got to be able to come out of your hands and correct itself in a beautiful fashion. If you just go baseball in it, it's just immediately going to tumble. As far as where to push from, I'm always pushing from this central point. You don't really push from down here or up here. It's always that central point. The only thing that changes with distance is sometimes I may let it ride a little bit longer before I push it. This is especially effective at closer distances. I'm gonna go out about seven or eight feet. You can do this from your dominant leg in the back or the front. Here's what it looks like with your dominant leg in the front. It's still the same hand and torque mechanics, but it looks a little different. I'm gonna give you a side view on this now. I'm gonna throw it a piece of wood about 10 feet away. And when it comes out of my hand, I'm just gonna put it in crazy slow-mo for you. So to be a little bit of the devil's advocate here, I can understand why people push back at this being a no spin throw because to accomplish distance with this you got to get some tilt back on that blade and you got to push it but i'm still using the exact same principles that i use for standard no spin throwing a lot of people just don't like how the blade is so cocked backwards i've even had some people try to say dude that is a half spin throw i can see why they say that but it's not a half spin it's not even a full half spin rotation and it's not half spin mechanics the debate on whether something was no spin or not got so bad on my tiktok channel that i just started calling it instinctive throwing and then everybody shut up because they weren't debating the method they just knew that i could throw from varying distances without having to stand on a line or be governed by rotations I got so tired of reading the comments on what people thought was no spin and not no spin that I finally just told them, call it whatever you want to, but let's call it getting it done because that's what instinctive knife throwing is. The bottom line is, is that you were able to do a throw that wasn't governed by distance and you were able to do it hard and fast on the fly. I want to get out ahead of those right now that would say, why would you throw your knife away? Well, I wouldn't throw my only knife away. There would only be rare, rare situations where I would throw my only knife. Most of the time I've got more than one blade on me anyway. And if we were ever in a bad enough situation where we had to suit up, I would definitely have more than one blade. But a lot of people use these questions and excuses as a reason to not get out and just learn how to do this stuff. Watch how quick you can transition from action to throwing with this type of throw. You can go from slash, slash to a throw, just like that. It's that practical. So friends, that brings us to a conclusion of part two of hammer grip, no spin knife throwing. I've given you three solid angles to look at, hyper slow-mo. If you've got more questions, drop them in the comments, but I tried to give you everything I felt like you needed in this video. Thanks for watching. Take care.